Hello everyone, this is Korath Landwalker, and tonight we have another exciting episode of Star Trek Online. Last week, we began to follow the career of the warrior Zidane of the Klingon Empire, and he was a mere third in command when stuff happened, and before he knew it, his first officer was dead, then he killed off his captain, and now he's in charge of the... Well, that's where things get a little more complicated. In the meantime, the prisoner from the Federation that he'd been um, commanded to bring back to Kronos got away. It says something about the prison security at uh, Kronos that the Federation prisoner managed to basically waltz right out with a minimal minimum amount of help. However, we have gotten something a little more interesting in mind. You see, when you fail to recapture a prisoner, no matter how wily and all that they are, despite all the stuff you may have done prior, Maybe you don't deserve the ship that you were you have, and yet maybe you deserve something that's a little bit better too. And this is one of the big other big read. I wanted to play a Klingon character for this series for two reasons. One, because he is a Klingon recruit character, so I'll be able to try all the stuff that's listed on this uh, Klingon receiver, most of which I've claimed the stuff that I've. I can use, I've already claimed. More stuff will be incoming as I go along, I'm sure. May all my guesses be right. But that's only part of the reason. Now comes the other reason. You see, some months ago, the developers put something on the C store that I could not pass up. I could not pass it up. So, we will be flying the legendary D7 Intel Battlecruiser. Bas basically, it's a tier 6 that you can use right away, although you can't really use it to its full capacity until you get to a level where you could fly tier 6 ships. But I've always had a deep-seated fondness for this design of Klingon vessel. So we're gonna fly it. And I've given it the name the IKS Scylla, or Scylla. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that. And there's a story behind this. Just a small story. But it's a, a story. You see, once upon a time, before there was Star Trek The Next Generation, there was the original series. I know, big shock there, right? But more importantly, before that, well, after the original series, but before The Next Generation, basically pocket books would put out on a monthly basis Star Trek novels. And one of the earliest novels was written by John M. Ford called The Final Reflection. And it chronicled, well, it had a story from a Klingon point of view. And Klingons were not the warrior species they are now. Although they were certainly uh, looking for trouble. I mean, this again, Next Generation hadn't come out yet. This was all original series. So... The primary character was Captain Kren, and his starship was known as the Mirror. In honor of that, I've tra taken the Klingon translation for Mirror and applied it to the starship. So for all intents and purposes, this is the IKS Mirror, which is Zidane's new command. And 
and it's hard to tell because of the bloody thing in the center here. Let's fly away a little bit, shall we? Ah, cling on the Starfleet vessels. Bah! <laughs> I just want to get far enough away so I don't have to beam to the first city and cling on Academy thing here. There we go. So we can fully appreciate the design of the D7 battle cruiser. Now, you gotta admit, it's a classic look. Even though that it's got a long neck that, you know, feels like it should be snapped in half with almost no provocation at all. Doesn't matter. It's still got this great, great design behind it. I just love it. Every other Klingon ship has tried, well, except for Birds of Prey, of course, but every Klingon ship that's been shown on Star Trek, at least prior to Discovery, has tried to measure up to this sort of work and never quite got there, in my personal opinion. Even Star Trek Online has a very limited number of ships that even come close. But this, this is the classic D7 Battlecruiser. If I have, if there's any ship design that can rival Enterprise, this is it. I do admit that I'm a man of my time. Now it has a couple of interesting toys here. You see, it's got these special abilities, which are it's an it's kind of an Intel Battlecruiser. So it'll have intelligence powers and abilities that can be used with Intel Bridge Officers. It's also got a Miracle Worker seat, so I'll, I'll be able to basically make use of two different types of specialized Bridge Officers when the time comes. We're not there yet, obviously, but it is on my list. Additionally, we've got the some of the cruiser commands. Basically, it's the uh, weapons, the shields, and I want to say this one is the, yeah, maneuvering. So, this can be more maneuverable than it looks, which I'm hoping for. Uh, while I'm here, let's put uh, Kurgan, Kurin and Kagan and Thrak as my operating bridge officers right now. How long they live, well, that's still an open question. Also of note, I have a couple of special consoles because this is the legendary D7 and it's got basically all the good stuff from the other battle cruiser, similar battle cruisers in the game. That's the whole point behind it being a legendary thing. It's got all the stuff. It's got this ability, which will be a knockback, damage, and apparently tries to disable stuff the repel. It's got all sorts of good stuff about it. We'll see how well that works out in the fight. And this one is, and this is the one that's kind of strange because this is more of a Kirk maneuver than a Klingon maneuver. The Corbomite maneuver. And apparently it really seems to beat the living tar out of the ship almost. Except it makes it go faster, but aside from that, we'll see how well it works out. Uh, We'll be playing with all the stuff. And finally, it has a battle cloak, which means it can operate in the middle of a fight. That's a big deal. Okay, I think that's pretty much all the administrivia. I don't think I have any skill points to distribute. I have nothing special to worry about as far as inventory goes. Oh, let me make sure. Actually, I do have something special to deal with inventory. I need to swap out the old and useless junk and put in the new hotness. Let's see, batteries, which I may or may not have actually ever used. Uh, I think I'm going to hold off on putting these disruptor cannons on anything until I see how well the ship handles. Currently, it seems to be heavily beam-weaponed. 
as well as having a couple of photon torpedoes. These are infinity level items, which means they will level up with the ship. I don't think I actually get anything to put in these that are equivalent, so we'll see how it all bounces out. Finally, since these are standard uh, standard warp cores and shields and stuff, we're going to get rid of those and clear out my inventory now before it becomes an annoyance. Come to think of it, I'll do that with the standard issue Batleth too, since I've got a much more kick-ass looking one now. My officers all have better weapons than the ones I have in my inventory, so... I'll keep this one for, for a moment, because I still have an officer spot open, and I have no idea what he's going to have. Alright. Let me just uh, monkey with my interface a little bit. I like that have things in a kind of an even keel here. Now that we have taken command of this old D7 battle group, and let's let's be honest, no matter how much you pretty up with a tier 6 level, the D7 class is seen as old tech. Well, we'll see just how ineffective old tech really is, shall we? It's time to continue the adventure. Remember the Federation prisoner who got away? Maybe he didn't get away completely. We have identified the Federation prisoner you've been chasing. His name is Franklin Drake. Nothing good comes Some out of a name of like Drake. Some sources say he's a Starfleet intelligence agent. But there are hints that he's much more. From what I can tell, he's not part of the normal chain of command. Previously, we didn't have any images or genetic samples from him, which is why he was so hard to identify. Now, we'll be on him the second he shows his face again. We already have a lead for you to follow. Oh, good. Records indicate a Klingon shuttle entered space above the Rurapente penal colony. Ah, Rurapente. is restricted, and there was no traffic schedule. The alien today. graveyard. You are authorized by the High Council to approach the system and determine if Drake is there. Bring him back alive, if you can. I still want to take out his limbs. Rurapente, for those who are not in the know, was in Star Trek VI and was widely considered to be a fate worse than death. Kind of gives you a warm feeling inside, doesn't it? Cherish the warm feeling because it's the only warm part about Rura Pendant. Our awards will be our standard trifecta, expertise, experience, dilithium, plus an upgraded photon torpedo launcher, and a Jackal Mastiff Combat Pet. Because, you know, oh, plus I get a shield and a Harpeng Torpedo Launcher. Which I will go into more in a bit. There in the meantime, work to do. let us go forth. Oh, right, there was one more thing I needed to do here, wasn't there? I want to get my torpedoes put properly. I don't like having auto fire torpedoes, so I took those off. I also want them on my easy to reach keys. Uh, there is one more thing I want to do, actually, because it looks like I want to kind of shift my inventory, all my stuff a little bit over to the right here. And let's can I, can I move this down. Yeah, that down a little bit so I can move that. And then we can put this up here. Better. I like. I don't like having overlapping windows. <laughs> all right. All righty. All righty. All righty. Let's do the transwarp thing because again, why inflict travel time on people when we don't have to? This way, we can get right into the meat of it quickly. Here we are, Ruripente, known throughout the galaxy as the Alien's Graveyard. Hey, did I not say that? It's a Class P frigid world with no habitable surface areas. It is also rich in dilithium and various heavy industrial metals. As a result, it serves as a penal colony 
for prisoners of work until they die in the dilithium mines. Like I said, fate worse than death. The life expectancy of a worker in Rurapende is very short, like maybe a year. That's the long-term residence. The minimum, I'm sure, is a lot shorter, especially since, you know, the prisoners have been known to get into fights with each other. And the Klingons don't care. Why should we care? If they're dead, well, hey, there'll be someone to replace them soon enough. Let's see, you've got another one of those slow-loading things. Oh, you may have also noticed here on the screen about the fall of the old ones. That's a special task force operation enabled for the Halloween time. It gives you a zappy thing that turns people into cats. That, yeah, I, I'm just not feeling it. This is Warden Kutuk of the Rura Pente Penal Colony. You do not have authorization to land. Turn back now. Any attempt to violate our security perimeter will be met with force. I have a counter to that. It's called Fight Me. Our authorization comes from Chancellor Jimpak himself. It is unwise to stand in the way of his representatives. Unless, of course, you'd like to become a resident of your own prison. Ha! Serve and return. My apologies, Kalekanis. I am honored to meet you. What do represent Now, if I knew anything about Klingon, and Rura I would know what the hell that Kalekan... Kalekanesh is in it? I have... <laughs> I have no idea what that means. We're looking for a Federation fugitive. We think he's here. There are no Federation Corp on Rura Pente. Are you aware enemies of the Empire should be killed, not fed and coddled like infants? Wouldn't that put you out of a job? It appears the spy is as good at getting into prisons as he is at escaping them. Check your sensor logs, Warden. He is here, somewhere. Our security logs are checked every quarter hour as per regulations. There have been no transfers in or out of the colony within the last day. Only two ships have entered the system today. Yours and a Klingon shuttle. The shuttle left the system hours ago. You are still here. Good observation. What about the shuttle? Your arrogance is tiresome, Warden. Produce your sensor logs at once. Our logs clearly indicate the shuttle left the system hours ago. There have been no transfers. All prisoners in this colony are either accounted for or dead. Your trail has gone cold. Yeah. He seems so trustworthy. We're coming down to take a look. Ready to beam down on your command, Captain. There is a magnetic field covering the entire penal colony to prevent prisoners from escaping via transporter. We'll have to beam down to the outskirts of the magnetic field and walk to the entrance. I can take it. But we only have one person beaming down with me, so... Decisions to decisions. Chagrin will give me... Oh, give me a couple fabrications and shield recharges. Kagan will give me grenades, battle strategies, suppressing fire, and fire on my mark. And Thrak, he's the man who has, you know, healing stuff on him. Guess what I'm taking? <laughs> I can do damage. In fact, I am encouraged to do damage because one of my little uh, special feats for using that Klingon recruit Where thingy you think you are going? involves melee combat and I've got business with the warden so get out of the way you may have crossed the magnetic shield but your visit is unannounced and you will follow protocol no one simply wanders around this prison I will escort you to the warden very well peon lead the way you will follow me oh you bet because I'm not turning my back on you you look as trustworthy as a human. Warden, the visitors are here. 
I can see them, Rogaz. Well, I see that he's got as much respect for you as I do, Rogaz. <laughs> Your presence here is unnecessary. The only Federation citizens on Rura Plinth are frozen into the ice. But don't let me dissuade you from your manhunt. Good. Tell your people to start looking. My guards will stay where they are. If there was a breach, it would have tripped the alarms. Our security system is quite advanced. This is a prison after all. Please, examine the security system for yourself. If you refuse to accept the word of the prison warden, that is. We'll find him. Anybody with a name like Drake can clearly not be trusted. You dare to question the honor of a warrior of the House of Torg? You may be representatives of Jembak, but you'll taste my blade if you insult me again. Please. Go! See for yourself! You'll only find the Padak dumped here to rot! Yeah, we're gonna uh, prove your incompetence shortly. Follow me to the general holding area. Now, notice that everybody's got these nice little fur shoulder pads there to help show that it's really, really cold here. Here, boy. Here, boy. You like meat? I got meat. <laughs> All right. What did that guy just say? Oh, it'll defend me without fear. I approve. Enter the query. Get me inside. Interrogate the prisoners, Captain. One of them may have spotted the few. Fear is a priority target in the area. Stay alert. Oh, I think I just got a message from the mysterious Klingon who gave me that device. There is an enemy here. Look for anybody unusual. Priority target. So clearly somewhere along the line, someone else in here is gonna die. Yeah, because I don't recall seeing anything about priority targets in the past, and even though they've revamped the uh, Klingon experience, I'm pretty sure that... Uh, Target acquired. Subject is guilty of Termination. Oh, there it is. Oh, no, you don't. Uh, let's see. Kurtal the Saboteur. No, Kurtal the Sculptor. Kurtal the Ex Sculptor. Maggot. Alright, let's start, let's start questioning the prisoners around here. Looks like some of them are over here. We'll have a chat with them. I guess I can bolster the battle. Where's Drake? Being smart asking questions down here. You might not like the answers. Oh yeah? Maybe I will. Where's Drake now? I, let's see if I can do the Christian Bale uh, Batman. Where's the human? Oh, no, I can't do that long term. I've just heard my that just kills my throat. <laughs> we got nothing to talk about. You Where's Is Drake? Can we try my case? No. Idiot. Uh, got anything to trade? No, I don't. You, where's Drake? I don't know you. No kidding, you don't know me. Cretan. You. I believe someone is following you, Captain. Turn around. Yeah, come to think of it, that guy was watching me earlier, wasn't he? He looks familiar. You, where's Drake? No, better yet, why are you following me? Then tell me where Drake is. None of these prisoners will help you. They 
can sense danger far better than you can. And they know the risks of getting involved in a fight that's not theirs. And what makes you think that? Because I'm not a batak like the warden and his cousin. Point to you Have there. You ask yourself, why would a human come to Rura Pente? He's clearly looking for someone or something that he can't find anywhere else. The human is here to extract a prisoner. There are no other alternatives. If he was coming to kill someone, then he's a corp. All he needed to do was wait. Everyone sent to this hole dies. Most are dead before he came. Hey, what I tell you? Life life expectancy at best one year. What I tell you? You seem to have your fingers on the pulse around here. Are you a uh, plant? Are you questioning my honor? If you think you're safe because you hold a weapon, you're mistaken. The only thing standing between you and a cold grave is my patience. Yeah, I've already put down one of the prisoners here, and he was armed. I don't think your odds are looking pretty good. Someday I'll teach you a lesson for testing my resolve. The human is here, but it is a complicated situation. You must do exactly as I say. We are surrounded by enemies, and you will need my help to survive. And I trust a criminal because... The only crime I've committed was thinking there could be peace between the great houses. And all you need to know is that I am a Klingon warrior with the information you need. Follow me, and I will take you to the one the prisoners call the Word. Take me to him. The Word is over by we'll the discuss your attitude later. Or maybe not, after all, leaving you here at Rura Pente to die from exposure in the cold, alone, without a chance to gain glory in battle. That feels like the better punishment than anything I could devise. Drake. I'm, I'm here to take off your hands and your feet. There you are. I was wondering if I'd lost you. Yeah, that arrogance of yours is going to be your undoing. Don't try to play coy with us. You have the subterfuge skills of a wounded tar. Who dis? think no one here would notice a new prisoner? Or that no one would notice when you tampered with the air exchanges? Say what now? What are you trying to pull? I see you found a new friend. Look, if I had the time to explain, I would. But I'm on a tight schedule, and you took your time getting here. If you want to know what's going on, I was busy getting friend, thrown onto a new ship. To ask your new friend. I need to be going. Oh, no, you're not. You're not going anywhere. Whoa, ah! And I see we've already got problems here, so we might as well start, uh. Well, we've got a bit of a prison riot going on here now, so... This seems, this feels like a golden opportunity to get as many kills as I can with my battles. If I can take down a lot of prisoners, that'll give me a good way... Good, good ways away from my, uh... Klingon recruitment stuff. No, you don't. Plus, you'll see I've got these optional goals of quelling unarmed prisoners. Which, I guess, feels kind of like a real come down here, but that's okay. They're fighting me with uh, fists. I'm fighting them with a bat lift. I'm not using a disruptor. It's a fair... It's Well, it's as fair a fight as I'm willing to let them have. Let's get that way. Hello, prisoner. Now, honestly, I really don't think I get anything special for taking out the unarmed prisoners. I've never seen an optional goal actually, you know, do anything for me. But, you know, hey, why not? This gives me the great opportunity to take down as many people as possible with the bat lift. I can 
could unlock more abilities with this thing or all sorts of other stuff. I'd be a fool to pass up the opportunity that this gives me. Now, you know, I'm a little offended that uh, my science officer medic is the one who got aggro. Okay, did we miss anybody? Got everybody? I don't see anybody. Oop! Don't want to miss you. And it's still 96. Oh, he was an armed prisoner? Oops. I see any other prisoners? Oh, we got some. Let me see if there's anybody over up here. Doesn't look like it. Okay. Time to go this way and. Continue our killing spree. Oh, okay, maybe not that way. Am I going the right Yes, I'm going the right way. Because I've got prisoners running towards me. How polite of them. They're coming towards me. Yes, I know, admittedly, that I've kind of let these guys distract me from chasing Drake, but you know. Okay, I've taken care of my quota of unarmed prisoners. That just leaves armed prisoners. Let's see if I've uh, unlocked anything on here. 50 kills, what will this give me? Uh, it improves my bat lift, giving it, uh, giving it the ability to heal the welder based on damage dealt. So now my bat lift is even more badass. Fifty percent damage against unhealthy opponents. Five percent of damage dealt comes as health. Yeah, baby. <laughs> Hello. Oh, look, it's an armed guy. I want you. You're a priority target. Not to be confused with, you know, the my secret benefactor's priority target. Seems to be a low percentage of ooh, shiny object. Never know when I might actually, you know, do R and D related stuff. Ooh, I guess there's a dilithium event going on too, but I usually don't see dilithium with that stuff. Oh wait, that guy's these guys are shooting. That makes them far more valuable to me as uh kill targets. Hmm, 46%. An odd number. Hello, tough guy. Clearly, what I gotta do is get one of those kits that allow me to lunge. Make sure I get in close combat range with, that, with little trouble. Hello. Ooh, man, that must be some major dilithium. Uh... Too bad I can't harvest it and, you know, put it in my inventory. Oh, no, we're not done with you. Oh, hello, tough guy. Prison riot. Oh, how about that? There was something a bit of here. Accolade. Not bad. And there's our prisoner. The worm has slithered to the surface. We need to stop him before he can reach the edge of the magnetic shield. I promise that I'll explain everything once we track him down. Fine, but remember that for now, you're my prisoner. You'll be back here in very short order. And slow loading screen. That happens sometimes. Can't do much about that.
Can't be that complicated. It's all snow. And maybe some ice. But mostly snow. And here we are, across the frozen plain. The human is trying to cross the ice. We need to hurry before he gets outside the magnetic shield. He's got a subtle. He may not need a magnetic shield. In that case, we don't have any time to waste. It will be difficult to track his movements in this flurry. Well, you know, I've got this pet jackal here. Probably can follow a worm wherever he goes. All right, boy. All right. Go after a drink. Go after a drink. Yeah, that's it. Go for it, big guy. Track him down. Oh, what's this? Oh, we've got some uh, additional jackals coming by. Well, too bad. We're we're kind of in a hurry. We can't really waste our time on you guys. Those were wild jackals. Keep a lookout for more. They travel in packs. How can they survive on the surface? Oh, I'm sure they grab some supplies. The worm. They must feed on the corpses. Oh, you're talking about the jackals. My bad. Speaking of jackals, I would also imagine they're probably cannibalistic to an extent. Kimtar. When did he? When did he? When did he throw his name out at us? I don't recall seeing I'm that. A diplomat. My peaceful words were called treason. How can there be peace? We are at war. You've clearly never read the works of Chancellor Gorkon. If I recall, Gorkon got assassinated. I'm not horribly impressed. <laughs> We could always. Honor must be upheld. Oh, let's let those two talk. <laughs> the words of a warrior. Still, killing one another for honor blinds us to greater threats. Like what? The Federation? I am less than impressed with the Federation. Franklin Drake, notwithstanding. What's that, boy? What's that? You say he's over the hill? And there, there he, he is. is. <laughs> you came in that thing? You're braver than I thought. Impressive. Your determination is commendable. Yeah, let's not go that way. You can't escape, Drake. There's more at stake here than dealing with a lone human on a mission of mercy. In fact, our intelligence says you have very little time left to act. What are you blabbering about now? Our friend here discovered that one of the great houses is plotting against the Empire. He's correct, but his curiosity cost him. Now you and Alexander, I'm sorry, Kemtar, will both have a chance for glory. And yes, that is a very human sounding name. And yes, he is exactly who you think he is. Kemtar, your father still has friends in the Federation. They believe he's in great danger. I recommend a trip to the Vor system. There you'll find out just how big of a mess you're in. And find the proof of the Worf will want. Kemtar, how do you know this man? I don't. He and I have never met. But as I told you, the story is complicated. What you need to know is that he speaks the truth. There is a plot against the Empire, and it is not the Federation's doing. Our true enemies are closer than we realize. 
If we want to protect our people, we must go to the Vor system and see what is there. And why should I not both drag you both back into the pen? I don't care if you trust me. Kemtar, tell your father that obligations have been met. Only you can decide how you'll deal with the greater threat. What greater threat? I'm tired of your innuendo. Yes, I know. I can speak words like innuendo. The only threat you should be worried about is me. Rogaz, you worm, you followed us here? Uh, Mr. Karut, not only have you broken penal colony protocol, but you've meddled in the affairs of House Tor. I don't care if Kemtar is innocent. We were paid a great deal of latinum to keep this piece of Bakhtar locked up. He's not leaving here, and neither are you. You corrupt Vorsak! I'm gonna have to That's kick your butt in. It. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going after Rogaz first. You brought a bad lift to- oh, okay, you brought a disruption to a battle fight. Ah, dang it, and Drake's getting away. Urgh, you imbeciles! Now you all have to die for this. I finally had my hands on Drake, and you imbeciles cost me his capture. Expect more cards soon. Oh, I am not happy right now, Kimtar. I am not happy with you at all. And if it weren't for the fact that those we maggots in orbit, we should beam up as soon as possible and discuss what has happened. Sila, do you read me? We read you, Captain. What are your orders? Hooray for transport. Beam us up. We can't get a lock on your position, Captain. You must still be within range of the magnetic field. It's never easy, we will is bring it? The ship down to the surface to pick you up, Captain. Now this ought to be interesting. Excellent idea. Do it quickly. We may need more assistance. If we head for higher ground, it will be easier for your ship to locate us. Agreed. Luckily, there's plenty of higher ground, including this one with an oddly shaped triangle that telling me that tells me, hey, I should go this way. Okay, technically I can't see that. I'm not supposed to see that, but I do things like that sometimes. Look up ahead. The warden and the guards are approaching. All right, warden. Let's have a little chat about your buddy Rogaz, and you can put the disruptors away, or I will feed them down. No, I won't even feed them to you. I will be using a different orifice. You dishonorable dog. When the High Council hears what Jempak's representatives have done here today, they will order your immediate execution. And tell me, how much of a bribe did it take for you to forsake your honor? Enough to keep us warm long after your death. We get paid whether Kemtar lives or dies. So before I kill you, I'll offer you the coward's choice of surrender. One of the greatest enemies of the Klingon Empire would say that there's a third option. What am I forgetting, Tokshan? My starship. Now you see, here's a little flaw in their cutscene. Because obviously, I am not currently flying a bird of prey. I mean, it looks great for the cinematic, but sorry, ever since you introduced the ability to use tier 6 ships at right off the bat, that cutscene don't work no more. So, erase the Bird of Prey from your memory and just replace it with a D7 battle cruiser, and we'll all be happy. I trust you're ready to leave this freezing, miserable place, Captain. In many ways, I think Rurapente is worse than Grethor itself. Drake said we should go to the Vor system. What would we possibly find there? Whatever is there, it is a threat to the Klingon Empire. We must find evidence to show the Council. Very well. In light of the fact that uh, Rur Pente now has nobody in charge, and everybody could basically walk out now, you might as well come along. After all, Alexander, we have much to talk about. Transporter room is standing by, Captain. We're ready to bring you aboard at your command. Do so.
Now the amusing thing about that mission, no space combat at all. Still, we still haven't had a chance to show off the D7 in battle. Your report on Warden Attack and the prison riot was disturbing. I have transferred many prisoners to Urapente, and this is the first I've heard of corruption. As you know, the Empire does not tolerate fraud or dishonesty. I accept your resolution to the matter. I am displeased that you did not apprehend Drake. The fact you freed Kimtar also requires scrutiny. I've not been if impressed Kimtar by 100% of the wardens I've met so far, so I'd be careful what you say. I would demand that you return him to First City at once. However, if you believe there's evidence of further corruption, you have my authorization to pursue this matter discreetly. Very wise. So, we've got our standard levels of rewards. Photon torpedo, personal shield, and a harp peng. Congratulations, Lieutenant. So, about the harp peng. The harp peng on paper looks like a pretty potent weapon. I mean, let's see. A little short of 2,000 kinetic damage, as opposed to my 1800 off of the photons. Special damage if I happen to be fighting a doomsday machine. That doesn't happen very regularly with Klingons, but you never know. It applies harpang radiation. But here's the thing. The harpang, it doesn't actually get any benefits from the tactical torpedo abilities. I can't high yield this thing. As far as I'm concerned, it makes it useless. Photon Torpedo Launcher, on the other hand, is far more useless. Well, actually, let's double check before I do that. Uh, 301 DPS versus 280. Yep, it is an improvement, but I'm not going to get rid of this Photon Torpedo Launcher because, again, it's infinity level, which means I may find use for it somewhere along the line if I fall behind on mark abilities. We also have a better shield, which I will wear because I'm the captain. I get the good stuff first. But sadly, nothing else. Oh, yeah. The Jackal Mastiff is also in my inventory, and now he is going to be at my side at me. Skills. Continuing the tactical noise, we're going to grab projectile weapon heads. Now, I'm going to say up front here that I'm going to go a lot heavier on the tactical side than I usually do. I usually tend to try to have a balance on my abilities. But I want to fill in as much of these tactical slots as possible. So I may very well do something unusual for myself and actually grab the level 3 versions of some of these things as opposed to being satisfied with level 2. But, you know, we'll see how things shake out. Alright. Now that we've done that, let us follow, follow the breadcrumbs. Four, I believe, was the system. During my time as ambassador, I uncovered evidence that one of the great houses has been corrupted by a foreign influence and is plotting against the Empire. I was thrown into Urapenthe as punishment for digging too close to the truth. The fugitive Drake suggested that we travel to the Vor system. They seem to have a little bit we of hope to find evidence that we'll iffiness between uh, is the text and the dialogue. The it's pretty close, but you know. It does kind of smack of, come on guys, if you're developing this, you could at least make the dialogue match the text or vice versa. Standard rewards, experience, expertise, dilithium, and a new set of impulse engines, and a science console. Which will increase our shield regen rate. So as before, we are going to take the fast method of going to war. The Vor system is comprised of a Class F star orbited by three planets. 
War 2 is a Class Q world in an elliptical orbit, and researchers are conducting a long-term study of the planet to determine if it would be suitable for terraforming. God, I love that ship design. Captain, we've entered the Vor system. There's a starbase in orbit dead ahead. Huh. It's one of ours, but the record's listed as a research facility operated by Deridian scientists. That seems like an unusual set of crew for a Klingon station. The Eridians are not known for their scientific prowess, but the research station is listed as a protected asset. According to your ship's computer, the Eridians have a trade agreement with a human scientist named Amar Singh. He is working with someone in the Empire. Once upon a time, Amar Singh was going to be a bigger thing in this game. It's unclear what Drake expected us to find here. Let's find out. Use my cruiser ability to increase my maneuverability. And yeah, it looks like I could use all the help I can get. I mean, it's not unmaneuverable. I think when I get a chance, I'm going to get some engineering RCS consoles on this thing. Turn rate is king. This is research facility Lodner Beta 3. I am Plardos Yardin, commander of the station. With whom am I speaking? I am Lieutenant Don of the IKS Zala. Uh, we weren't informed there would be visitors today. How may we serve the Empire? We're here to perform inspection. Commander Plardos, you will provide this ship's computer access to all recent station communication logs. You will also transmit a manifest of shipments and supply delivery receipts for the last month. And make it quickly, because we do not have that much time to spend here. I have something very official to send to you. Stand by. <laughs> Do you think they got the point? Oh, be quiet. You sound like a Ferengi. Send over the information now. Yes, well, I suspect that you nobody is going to actually get it because if you don't give us what we want very quickly, we are going to take you apart piece by piece. Of course we're hiding something. We're conducting classified research. That's why you are not authorized to access station records. You do understand the concept of top secret, don't you? You do understand the concept of photon torpedoes, don't you? This is preposterous! We refuse to hand over top secret information without proper authorization. We will defend ourselves, if necessary. Really? This should be entertaining. They powered up defensive cannons and small craft. So now we're going to give the D7 its first workout. Yeah, fast and maneuverable ships, they're all well and good as far as it goes. But they don't do so well if they're in a tractor group. The station commander sent a distress signal. A ship is responding. Good, this will be a fight then. Captain, Romulan on sensors. Well, this just got interesting. Captain, the 
Romulans are hailing us. Put them on screen. We received a distress call from this station. We are here to provide assistance. Your assistance is not needed here. You're intruding in Klingon space. Get out. Station Commander Plardos sounded distressed. He mentioned a disagreement with a Klingon vessel. It would be dishonorable of us not to investigate. A rhyme and an honor? Don't make me laugh. We appreciate the delicate nature of the situation. Would you mind if we spoke with the station? Perhaps we could resolve any misunderstanding. Sure. We'll, we'll wait. I find this very suspicious. Why would Romulans respond to a distress call here? Monitor their communications because I don't trust them. They're Romulans. The Romulans hailed the station on an open frequency, and then immediately switched to an encrypted channel. Hmm. The Romulan ship hasn't raised shields. What are they up to? Don't tell me these things. I've become tempted to throw torpedoes at them while they're unprotected. I don't need to remind you that we're in Klingon territory. The fact that these Romulans are here at all could be the clue we need. Yeah, but... It's not clues we're looking for. We want hard facts. Captain, the station has transported several crates of goods to the Romulans. And there we go. Hail them. Commander Plados has explained the situation. It sounds as if there's been a miscommunication. Oh, you bet there is. Like the contraband you just got beamed over. Now you're going to send it to us, or we'll take it. The foolish bravado of the Klingon Empire. Attacking your own station, and then accusing us of wrongdoing. I should have expected something like this. Very well. We'll communicate in terms you can understand. Bring it. Let's try some of those new abilities of mine, shall we? Yeah, I kind of did interesting things. Let's try that one too. And let's use that vulnerability thing too. I mean, got, I've got all these new abilities to work with. Why not play with them? Now, at some point, yes, I can do one of these abilities, and they'll have various effects on the target ship. That does make it interesting, doesn't it? Ship could belong to those rebels we've been hearing about. This is Commander Telek of the Romulan Republic. We are here to cooperate with the Klingon Empire. Well, the Klingon Empire is us, so... Ordinarily, I wouldn't try to get this close to the Warbird, but at a low level, they don't tend to toss off those triple plasma torpedoes plus tractor beam combinations. Let's see. Little of science buffs? Nah. Little tactical buffs? Yeah. I probably should pay more attention to their uh, abilities there. Ooh, got you. Back end photon torpedoes do their work. The Romulan Republic is thankful for your assistance. We had tracked the Tall Shiar to this system, but we would have been outmatched without your aid. Well, you know, you fought on our side, so today we at least we are not enemies. The Romulan Republic faces many challenges, but conflict with the Klingon Empire should not be one of them. As a gesture of good faith, I'll share with you information that you might find to be of value. Go on. We believe Tall Shi'ar agents are collaborating with operatives in the Klingon Empire to steal weaponry and technology. We have uncovered large supplies of Klingon weapons on the planet Nimbus 3 that we believe are being stockpiled there by agents of the Empress. Or shadowing. The stolen goods are being transferred through several facilities in the local sector including this science station. Do you have proof to offer? The shipping manifests on the supply crates and the weapons themselves. 
By tracking the flow of goods, we've learned that there are agents in the Klingon Empire transferring stolen supplies to the Tal Shiar. Those supplies are being stockpiled on Nimbus 3. If you will help track down the source of those weapons, we will share our data with you. I can't make any promises, but the odds go way up if you send us the data. Transferring the data now. We expect the Klingon Empire to track down the source of these stolen goods and punish those responsible before more weapons fall into the wrong hands. If we discover any further information, we will notify the Empire's ambassador on Mol Rihan. Thank you. Give me that code, Plardos. We need to have a final conversation. Ensure that our research doesn't fall into the wrong hands. You whine like a Ferengi. Why are you dealing in stolen goods? We we didn't know the shipments we were transferring were stolen. I, I was told that the crates were medical supplies needed on the war front. We didn't ask questions. Please show mercy. We were only doing what we were ordered to do. Then while we're on the subject of orders, send me the data. Due to present circumstances, we will forego normal security authorization and provide the files you have requested. We live to serve the Empire. Get them over here before we decide to see how quickly it takes for the atmosphere to be vented out of your station. We've received the data that Kemta requested, Captain. Take some time to analyze these files and track the source of the shipments. In the meantime, we are prepared to leave the system on your command. Let's do so. I become ill being near this slime. Still the Silla. Officers have analyzed stuff. the shipping logs Proven. from the research facility. Up Their to the task of confirm fighting. confirm what the Romulan Republic officer told us. Someone has been routing technology and weapons to the Tal Shiar. And they are going to great lengths to cover their tracks. Do you think a great house is involved here? An operation of this magnitude would require the resources of one of the houses. But the shipments are being routed in such a way to conceal their point of origin. Our evidence is circumstantial. It was my eagerness to point fingers without proof that landed me in Urapenthe in the first place. We must exercise patience and wait for our prey to reveal themselves. Right. Now about your father, Alexander. My father is Ambassador Worf. He has many friends and many enemies. I tried to convince him that one of the houses was moving in the shadows against us. He either didn't believe me or didn't care. Either way, he made his decision when he refused to act after I was sent to Urapenthe. His pride is a weakness our enemy will try to exploit. I suppose I could try to persuade him to listen, but I can't make any promises since I'm just a lieutenant. You can try, but we must be prepared if he doesn't. We should at least warn him of the danger, even if he refuses to see the knife at his throat. Yes, we can definitely prepare. Off to Kronos. Transwarp. Act him now. Hey, Cap. How are you doing this evening? Hope life is going well on your end of the monitor. I am currently running the Klingon Zidane in my relatively brand spanking new ship. Okay, it's only, it's only brand spanking new for the character. The ship is a classic D7 battlecruiser. The classic Klingon design. Which admittedly it would be a lot easier to see if it didn't have this uh, window here, but life's tough all over. We have, uh, we're about to have a meaningful conversation with one of the most famous Klingons in Star Trek lore. I'm not having high hopes for the conversation, obviously, but, you know, we try things. 
Is there a better Klingon design for a ship than this? Beaming down to the first city. Loading, loading, loading. There we go. And let's walk over and chat with this extremely familiar Klingon here. Perhaps. First, tell me who you are. I am Lieutenant Don. I care Salah. You've never heard of it. Don't bother. Greetings. How may I assist you? We need to have a private chat. That is an odd request. We stand in the courtyard of the Great Hall, and honor has no need of secrecy. If you cannot speak your mind in this place, then I have no desire to hear what you have to say. I'm here with your son, Kemtar. That is not my son's name. If Kemtar wishes to talk, tell him to come and speak to me. I will not communicate through intermediaries. Oh, I would chat with his using his real name, but I don't think you want me throwing it around right now, considering that he's supposed to be in, you know, icy jail. You're both in danger. He is the only one in danger, unless you have been foolish enough to listen to his tales. But you have already made that mistake. If you have spoken to him, then you have been to Rurapente. Oh, yes. And a great house, that's where we found out that a great house is kind of looking to kill you. Just saying. I am Gintok to the house of Martok. Lady Sorella has declared vengeance on the house of Jimpok. It would not surprise me if all the great houses wish me dead. Tell my son that I am capable of defending myself. Even against Romulans? Romulans? That does not make sense. Jim Pock's position towards the Federation and the Tal Shiar is very clear. And in this, he has my house's full support. It would be foolish for any house to make such a connection. However, I would not be surprised to hear you mention the house of Duras. Yeah, he might have a bit of a blind spot when it comes to the house of Duras. I don't, we haven't heard that name tossed around yet. And that is exactly the sort of accusation that landed my son in a penal colony. Tell Kemtar that unless he has proof, he should stay silent. If he is a fugitive from Rurapente, he will only make his situation worse. I do not want to know any more about what you two are plotting. So, do you ever get dialogue choices or is it always, is it always a single answer? Uh, sometimes... Especially in the, some of the more later missions, you do get dialogue choices, and sometimes that impacts the response, and sometimes it doesn't. It doesn't make a big difference as far as the storyline goes. It's not that sophisticated, but at least it has a bit more of the illusion of choice in how you approach a situation. You don't see it in too many of the early missions because you know early missions were there since the beginning of the game. But things get redone, they touch things up, and there may be some of that as we go along here. Has Worf agreed to speak to us? Yeah, he wanted to remind you that your name isn't Kimtar. What name I use is not important. Did you tell him what we've learned? And this is a bit of an example of uh, some of the way that some of the older missions have been retouched. Originally, we didn't get Kimtar's connection to Worf and the fact that he's Alexander until this moment. But when they redid the Klingon uh, early missions, Franklin Drake dropped his name early. So, you know, drawing the connection was not hard. But in that case, this bit of dialogue makes no sense. It's a continuing gripe I have that they change things around and they don't really look to see how that impacts everything else. Did you tell him the Romulans are involved? 
It says something about Duras. Given their history, I've considered the possibility that the House of Duras might be involved. Is he at least willing to review our evidence? Nah. Yaicha! <laughs> he's a stubborn old man and he is going to get himself killed. Well, we could maybe mention it to House Martok and let them make their call. Agreed. If the Jin talk to House Martok will not listen, we will take our concerns to the house itself. Martok's son Drex is off world. I will contact Lady Sorella and arrange a meeting. So now there's another example. The dialogue that he speaks does not perfectly match up with the dialogue on the screen. Again, I've ranted about this before a zillion times, and folks who've been paying attention to my stream for any real length of time know that that's one of my pet peeves in the game. That their dialogue doesn't match the storyline after they retouch things and reshuffle things, and this is actually one of the least offensive ones. It, it's worse in other missions. These events are very disturbing. They paint a picture of a large conspiracy against prominent houses of the Empire. I will work with my contacts to see what else I can learn. And I will notify you when I have enough leads to further our investigation. Oh, Kamtara, I sure hope that none of your contacts feel like you should go back to Aurora Pente, because, you know, that would be pretty embarrassing. Okay, let's pick up the rewards. Congratulations. And I've leveled up too. So, what can we do with our toys? We can put the science console for shields in the. Oh, no, I can't, because then I'd have. Well, actually, yes, I can. This is a universal console. So I can move it over to tactical, move the science console into place, and we'll replace the impulse engines. And discard that. batteries in slots. While I'm thinking about it, we're going to grab... Ooh, I've got 100 melee kills now. I've been doing good with my bat lift. What will happen at 100? It gets improved combat capabilities. Kind of vague, but you know what? I'll take it. Now, 500... I've probably got a ways to go with. Also, I did kill off... Uh, oh, how about that? I got some kills for uh, damaging people. Sorry. Oh, I didn't understand this uh, Hunter's Instinct at all. I assumed that I had to kill them during the ambush time when, they were, when I was cloaked. But all I gotta do is damage them from an ambush, and then I can kill them at pretty much at my leisure. Which is why I've got ten of these. What do I get for that? A console reward. I get three consoles. You know what? I'm going to hold off on picking this because right now I don't have room to put in three consoles. If I get three consoles opened up, then I will claim this. But right now, we're going to leave well enough alone. Finally, I took off took out the first, a priority target that my s hidden benefactor informed me about. Kerdal, the sculptor. The sculptor. What the hell did he sculpt? What do I get for killing him off? Three pieces of Klingon equipment of either rare or very rare quality. That I will claim and use now. And finally, the first story arc is complete. Play Empire. Is that really a story arc? Oh, yeah. Empire. Sorry. Sometimes I'm not quick. <laughs> what that'll get me is a box full of more Klingon equipment. I'll take it. Theoretically, I'm taking it. Did I not receive it? Or is it just slow? There we go. I have no idea what was going on there. 
Okay, personal equipment first, because I'm special. I give myself the good armor. I give myself a good shield. And I take the good rifle. But actually, you know what? No, I'm gonna give the good rifle to Dan, because right now I seem to be spending most of my time with the battle of carving people into small grief small bloody chunks, so give the old guns to uh, Thrak there. And ditch his old gun. Uh, again, you get the armor and the shield, because you're the tactical guy, which means you're probably going to get aggro more often. And that means you'll probably end up dead more often. Moving along to my ship, I have a really weird looking disruptor beam array. It'll be interesting. And the warp core is better than the warp core I am using now, so we'll use that warp core. Finally, I have a second photon torpedo launcher. I'm gonna move this one to the back this one to the front. So three of my infinity level weapons are going to more or less stay out of the way right now and the warp core I'm gonna hold on to because I don't know when I want to get a small ship to uh, work with. At some point I'll deal with that but not right now. So, with one story arc done, it's time to start another one with rigging down the house. Sorella, lady of the house of Martok, has requested that you meet her at the house estate in the Ketha Lowlands. She did not explain why she wanted to see you, but I expect that she has some tasks she would like completed. The house of Martok has lost much prestige since I took the chancellor's seat but yeah he kind of killed Martok. many allies among the kdf and or so I it is believed to reject cirilla's request without a good reason gaining the favor of the house of martok could serve you well but remember they have many enemies i harbor no ill towards cirilla but do not get caught up in her vengeance against me it would not be in your best interest Ooh, subtle threat. All right. Rewards are standard grouping, expertise, experience points, and dilithium. Plus, if I know I'm going to put this Vavil personal com code, which will give me a access to a trader space that I can, you know, do banking and all that without leaving my ship. Also, a tactical bridge officer candidate always helpful and another a tactical console which is a disruptor induction coil that'll help all disruptor weapons serve the empire well and apparently i can start the mission right here so looks like for a change i get my full crew myself chagrin kagan and thrak Enjoy them while you can, because, you know, I've, last week I indicated that at some point I'm probably going to get hacked off at all of them, and they're all going to be executed at some point for one reason or another. Except maybe Kagan, because I'm not entirely sure I can do it. Oh, he almost forgot. Purchase skills. Duh. I is not smart. There we go. More projectile training. Off we go to the Ketha Lowlands. Ah, the estate of House Martok. It has been too long. After Gowron stripped my house of its titles and lands, this place became my home. I will defend it and House Martok to my final breath. Come, Lady Sorella waits for us ahead. Believe me when I say it is unwise to keep her waiting. I'm guessing, Kimtar, that you are the reason why she requested our presence here. Uh, just a quick check here. I want to see those improved combat stats for the uh, Batleth. 
50% increased physical damage. Me like you. And there she is, Lady Sorella, the widow of House Martok. Welcome. I will skip the usual pleasantries. We have serious matters to discuss. The House of Martok has many enemies. Some of them seek to curry favor with Jempok, or the House of Duras, by striking at us. Until now, most of these attacks have been little more than a nuisance. But now we know that an enemy may be plotting to assassinate Worf, and my grandson, Maven, may also be a target. The filthy Bakhtag willing to carry out such dishonorable attacks must be stopped. And so, I ask you to find these assassins and eliminate them. We will certainly do our best. Any threat to House Martok will be dealt with, my lady. On that, you have my word as a warrior. Where is Maven now? He is on his way to the Batleth tournament on Forcus Three with your father. Worf assured me that he would handle security matters during the trip, but that was before you reported your findings to me. Mm, perhaps we should investigate Forcus Three. Before you go, I have another concern. Our local farmers reported seeing a Romulan here recently. Given Kemtar's suspicions of a house collaborating with the Tal Shiar, it seems to be an odd coincidence. We need to know what the Romulan was doing here before you leave for the tournament. Yeah, that does reek of suspicion. Let's find him. I really don't want to take him prisoner, though, because, you know, we've had horrible luck with prisoners, you know, with Franklin, Drake, and all. <laughs> yeah, I knew I knew Franklin Drake was going to be a problem just because he had the name Drake. You can never trust a name like Drake. You, farm manager. A Romulan? Here? Once I would have considered that impossible. But we live in strange times. Maybe they have come to their senses and joined with the Empire against the Federation. I haven't seen this Romulan myself, but one of the others might have. You have my leave to speak with the workers. One of them might have seen your pointy-eared interloper about. I'll ask around. If one of them has seen what this Romulan... What does a Klingon farm to a Romulan? Oh, plenty of interest. Attacking a food supply of an enemy? I approve of that tactic. The only thing I've paid attention to of late has been the lack of rain. But you're a warrior, not a farmer. You wouldn't be interested in that. Sorry I couldn't help you. Yeah, all Klingons are warriors in their way. An enemy may be near. If you see him, let me know. How about you? Any luck? Mm, the Togs have been busy tearing up my roots. But other than that... I haven't seen anything unusual. Yeah, targs are persistent, like Romulans. <laughs> How about this one over here? I remember seeing the Romulan. He said he Aha. was a surveyor hired to architect a new irrigation system. He set up equipment on the hill over there, but I haven't seen him lately. It wouldn't surprise me if he's up to no good. You can never trust a Romulan. Truer words were never spoken. This survey may be more than he seems. You the think? idea of a Romulan moving alone, freely on a state grounds, I do not like where this is going. Let's follow his steps. Doing so could lead to insight on the Romulan's actions. Then by all means, let's follow the path. Follow the yellow brick road. Oh wait, that's that's a different uh, setting. And it's not exactly yellow brick either, is it? Don't bother me with these little trivialities about my I see the references. equipment there. It is definitely Romulan tech. So it is. It looks that like a... It is definitely Romulan gear, but it is not surveying equipment. 
What is it then? I've got suspicions based on its appearance, but I want to hear it from you. It is a short-range EM transmitter, not something a surveyor would use, Romulan or otherwise. Okay, I was wrong I entirely. Had a bad feeling about this. I thought Disabled it looked an awful device. lot like the uh, Romulan cloaking device way back in the original series. Of course, it's been so long I could be completely wrong about it. Whack it with a hammer! Well done. <laughs> we still have a suspicious Romulan on the loose, however. Quite. There is a shipping and receiving area nearby, close to a landing pad. I suggest speaking with the workers there. They may have seen our mysterious surveyor recently. Then let's find out if we can pick up the trail. Yeah, instead of doing the rational thing like, oh, come on, invisible walls, I loathe invisible walls. I've had this feel, I've had the hatred for invisible walls on maps ever since the days of Star Wars Galaxies on, uh, during the Rage of the Wookiee expansion at Kashyyyk, where you had all these open areas, but you couldn't go to them because you'd hit stinking invisible walls. Lazy, lazy, lazy work. Okay, rant over. <laughs> of course, on the other hand, you could make an argument that, you know, getting myself into a lather on that kind of thing would put me in a Klingon frame of mind. Yes, I remember this man. Not every day you see a Romulan in the Ketham Lowlands. He didn't say he was a surveyor, though. Told me that he was a part of a diplomatic delegation studying our agriculture. Yes, I get more suspicious by the moment. Martok would have never let a Romulan set foot on our world. That's why I don't think much of Jim Park. He's too soft. The oddest thing I remember, <laughs> other than him being a Romulan, was that he personally scheduled the delivery of goods to the farm. That was against our security procedures. Lady Sorella insists on authorizing all deliveries to the manor. Did you confiscate those goods? No, Wilfred. His codes were valid. He had Lady Sorella's signature. So I did as he asked. Fair enough. His delivery arrived today. It was the large package we moved to the grain storage shed near the house of Martok's manor. The Nep would know what we ordered. He handles most of Lady Sorella's business transactions. And let's find them. I find it amusing how you and talk about Jim Pop being soft. Is a he kicked off the uh, Federation War. Seems more likely. You, Tanap. I processed that delivery. It was an order for the House of Martok. They needed explosives for digging out a new irrigation system. The order was placed by Lady Serena with her signature and authorization code. Well, now we know what they're planning on doing. They want to blow stuff up. Normally, Sorella delays such tasks until the winter, when the farm hands aren't busy with planting and harvesting. All right, we need that Romulan now. Hmm. This spy is clever. Placing the explosives near the house of Martok's fertilizer stores. If he detonates them, the results will be devastating. I believe that device we found earlier was intended to be a trigger relay. Taking it out will slow the Romulan down, but it may not be enough to foil his plan. Well, ideally, the plan should be take out the Romulan. We should focus our search near the fertilizer shed. The spy will need a good vantage point to monitor the area before he triggers the detonation. Come, the hunt continues. Use your scanner to search for Romulan life signs. Time to find him and put an end to him. The signal is getting weaker. Okay, so this is gonna be one of those hot cold kind of things. The signal is getting weaker. Okay, so clearly that direction is not the direction I want to go. The signal is getting stronger. Good, good. The signal is getting stronger. So it is. So it is. The 
signal oh. is getting stronger. I don't think I need to worry about the signal at this point. Bromelin swine. One of those things on this planet. Ah! Get rid of that Tribble! <laughs> Tribbles, as a general rule, don't work for Klingons. Can't imagine why. Well, there's a bird of prey there. The signal is getting stronger. Okay. It seems I've hit another freaking invisible wall. The signal is getting stronger. The signal is getting weaker. Oh, it can't be too far. The signal is getting weaker. Your scanner has enough data to provide a direct line to the target. Must be in those boxes. Wait a second, it can't be that way. I hit a freaking invisible wall. Oh, here we go. I found I see the no. It's like things aren't rendering in properly. Yeah, whoever did the redesign of this map fail. There, by the ship. What is that Romulan doing? I guess I can't kill him immediately. <laughs> the house of Martok will crumble, and with it, the rest of the Klingon Empire. You cannot stop what has begun. Oh yeah? Watch me. Ah, nuts coward. Okay, let's swap over to beam weapons for now. They want to fight with beams. I got beams. They're finished. Deal with that bomb before it kills us all. And done. This ship, it is the Rotaran, the flagship of House Martok. That Romulan wanted to blow up more than fertilizer. Oh, that would have been a morale killer. Well, that plus, you know, the enormous loss of life. It would have been a fatal blow, both to the house and its honor. We chop. One thing is clear. Whoever is behind this plot has no honor. Not even a Fekiri would join forces with the Tal Shiar. It is madness. Well, I'm thinking our next move is to go to Forkus 3, but I'm interested in hearing what you have to say. We must continue the hunt, my friend. The Romulan still draws breath, and as long as he lives, our troubles will multiply. A piece of Baktok probably beamed up to a cloaked vessel in orbit. Let us return to your ship and see if we can find it. Well, we can try that too. Ever since Chempot recognized the government on New Romulus, the number of Romulan ships in orbit over Kronos has increased. Most of them have legitimate reasons for being here. As a diplomat, I realize that harassing such a ship could lead to... an incident. That's trouble we do not need. Now, no, uh, we've been pretty good with our diplomacy so far. I asked that Iridian trader we uh, had a conversation with. We were very diplomatic with our high-yield torpedoes. Very well. I am willing to continue, as long as you understand that discovering the vessel that holds our quarry will be difficult. Well, you know. There's a lot of warp and impulse traffic in the area. It's too much for the scanners to handle, especially if we're dealing with a cloaked ship. That's assuming the ship is still in the system. They may have gone to warp as soon as the spy stepped off the transporter pad. Depends on whether or not his Delta's mission is done. Scan for Singularity Core missions now. Ah, your intuition served us well, my friend. 
scanners are detecting trace singularity distortions from the nearby asteroids. I believe a cloaked Romulan warbird recently entered warp there. If we get a closer scan, I will be able to plot a course based on the warp trail signature. Take us closer to the asteroids. We'll activate our maneuvering so that we'll be able to maneuver faster. Well, we'll turn faster. I would kick out my cloak right now, but nine times out of ten when you have a dialogue option pop up, it decloaks you, so it's like, what the, what's the point? I'm being pursued by annoying Klingon insects. Uh, what happened to my... Oh, I must have... I must have removed that when I swapped slots. Where's my corporate uh... There we go. Hmm, okay. Situation is dicey. Let's pop on a cloak for a moment. It's times like this that make me wish I had the uh, Fire and Will ability available. Trying to maximize the people I damage in those first moments after I uncloak, hoping to get the benefit for that mission. And then there was but one. By all means, scan. Scan. Ah, there it is. Warp trail detected. Sensor analysis indicates that the Romulan is headed for the Forcus system. Which, as you might recall, I predicted. They're heading after Maven and your father. Agreed. I believe Lady Sorella's suspicions were correct. The Romulans mean to kill Maven and anyone that gets in their way, like my father. Both Maven and my father are formidable warriors, but even they can be overwhelmed by numbers and treachery. I must go to Forcus to warn them. Will you join me, my friend? It is the honorable thing to do. Maximum warp! We have arrived in the Forcus system. The Warbird's warp trail ends here. She's out there, somewhere. Initiating sensor sweep now. Open hailing frequencies. I've hailed him several times, but he has not answered. Either he is unable to respond, or unwilling to respond. Let us hope he is engaged with the Batleth tournament, and watching over Maven. We will need to beam down to the surface to know for certain, however. Maybe. Have we found that warbird yet? Yes. She is dropping into orbit over Forcus 3 and hailing us. It appears Commander Tarson would like a word. Put this piece of backtalk on the screen. You are becoming an annoyance. You have made yourself a target by defending the House of Martok. By following me here, you've given me no choice but to destroy you. Give it your best shot. Battle stations! Get a little closer. High yield arm. Oh! Looks like uh, my looks like using my uh, intelligence ability there might have been Oops, it was an honest mistake. Beat me! Cloaked. 
Scan for energy traces so we can follow him. Well, let's do that. And look, magic green triangle shows up. Cloak again. This time I will not make the mistake of activating any abilities until, you know, we're ready to start shooting him. Okay, it looks like we're gonna have to deal with other problems first. Proposition accepted. Yes, that does imply a certain level of treachery, doesn't it? Heck am I firing? That must be that other disruptor. No. Yeah. It must be a discovery era. That's the only thing I can think of. It's a discovery era disruptor that's firing. That's why it looks different than, you know, the normal disruptors I'm using. It's trying to figure out what that twit 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 noise was. Because <laughs> that's the kind of thing I usually associate with turret fire. Oh no, there's going to be no escape for you. We must find him quickly. Yeah, that explains the weird uh, design on here. Madness! There are Klingons working with that Romulan Takesh. I'm picking up another pocket of Tetrion particles, but we must be wary. There may be more dishonorable Klingon Bakhtar lying in wait for us there. Well, for them, it will be a bad day to die. So, we're going to cloak up again. And keep picking on the bad guys. If there are more Klingon traitors here, they will be sorry. Stop what is already set in motion. The You've Klingon already said that before. Empire will fall. Not impressed. In the slightest. The Empire has survived against bigger threats than a loudmouthed Romulan. I can't wait to out level that disruptor beam because that is really annoying. <laughs> oh no, you're not you don't get to turn around this time. Oh come now, he's only 1% left. And what do you know? I got a disruptor induction coil again. <laughs> Seeing as that's going to be one of the rewards for this mission, may have now I have two. And his agents to the surface. He also has Klingon traitors aiding his cause. We have more work to do, my friend. Let us beam down and attempt to contact Maven and my father before things get worse. By all means. Oh. Any Romulans here will be well hidden, but their Klingon allies will be able to move freely. Even so, someone might have noticed some unusual behavior. Let's start in the bar. Tongues loosened by blood wine may reveal clues we'd otherwise miss. Yes, and be aware, I've been notified by my secret benefactor that there is a priority target here. In other words, if you see something suspicious, shoot first, ask questions later. It's the Klingon way. It may be someone in this very room. 
Thank you. Did you see Jim Puck when he was young and still fighting in the tournament? Oh, now that was something to behold. He was masterful and fluent. Not like the young tars here these days. I'm surprised that some of them can hold on to their bloodless for the entire match. Ah. Yeah, one of these days I'll have to show you people where using a phallus is like. Wonderful. Another stout warrior eager to hear a story of my glory days in battle. Pull up a chair and I'll allow you the honor of buying me a bloodline. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> Got three people over here. Let's hit them next. Have you seen the fight up at the house of Duras? He looks like a real contender for champion standing. I'll bet you a barrel of blood wine that he wins without taking a single wound. It's amazing how many Klingons have barrels of blood wine. General Chang fought the Hall Master Core, both in their prime fighting position. Who do you think would take champion standing? Oh, Dahar Master Core by a thousand, man. <laughs> and what do you think of the new rule restricting bloodless links to between 110 and 120 centimeters? I noticed he didn't complete his phrasing here. Another one of those disconnects between dialogue and what's written on the screen. <laughs> personally won't use anything other than the traditional 116 centimeter length, but he can understand the desire for customization of one's weapons. <laughs> Do you really think a Romulan would be foolish enough to beam down to an arena filled with hundreds of Klingon warriors? Besides, ever since that one tournament where the champion of the House of Mokai used a transporter to steal his opponent's backlet in the middle of a fight, there are transporters. Oh, that would be dirty fool. <laughs> the only places they can operate are the transport pads and cargo storage. Cargo storage. The enemy is demons moving in disguise. Tactics worthy of House Mokai, but not a true Klingon warrior. If they're posing as cargo hauls, they will have access to the locker rooms where competitors store their gear. They need only wait there for Maven between rounds and strike when he least expects it. Then we need to get in too. Hearing oh. the chanting and sounds of battles reminds me of the first time I celebrated the Cote Maval Festival. That was the first time I repair is a priority target in the area. Stay alert. Thanks for the reminder, secret benefactor. Somewhere there is the enemy. Unlikely to be one of the people in here. Surely not the referee. Surely not the referee. Tournament administrator. Nuknek, speak quickly. I have a tournament to run and little time for pools. You may have infiltration. We require locker room access. Access is limited to maintenance staff and competitors. If you have a security concern, take it up with security. So you're not actually in charge then? I am. And you will explain your impudence before I show you why I am in charge the hard way. This is an urgent matter, Administrator. We don't have time for this. There is another way. Is it still possible to enter the tournament? Yes, I am more than happy to participate. Not as a competitor, but we do have a way for an exhibition match. One of the fighters put enough blood wine in his gut to drop the gorn king and had to withdraw. If you wish to take his place, I will allow it. I am ready. Combat you shall have. No firearms are allowed. You must use a melee weapon. A backlash is preferred, but this is an exhibition. So you may use an unconventional melee weapon, if you wish. Even one of those 
folk and lurkers, they wave at each other in mating disputes. Ha! Yes, I, I have a bat lift will be more than sufficient. And compete. You are a good sword master. A true master of the blade. It's just that I'm better. I am a little surprised. I was half expecting my priority target to be my opponent. Ha! You found well. Work on your form, and you might qualify for next year's tournament. You may use the locker rooms to clean up. Go. Should you have the courage, I will allow you the honor of buying me a blood wine later. Perhaps we will see if you drink as well as you fight. Yes, perhaps we shall. Perhaps said, we shall. I will tell you the story of how I came to be called Kemtop. Kemtop was the name of a warrior who saved my father from assassins on Moranga Forge. I used the name Kemtop to honor his memory, to remind me of what it means to be Klingon. Now, fun fact, I'm reasonably sure that uh, the warrior that saved his father was actually, and this will shock everybody, Alexander himself from the future. So, you know, the name Kimtar seems to be forever linked with Alexander. Well, none of these people here have tried to take a shot at me yet, so I'm assuming that my priority target is not necessarily in this room. We continue. What's this? A glob fly buzzes into these hallowed chambers? This is a place for competitors, insect. Be gone! Hey, I just won my exhibition bout against a rather poor opponent, so get out of my way. I need a shower. The insect buzzes still. I think it is time I stifled it permanently. Last chance, glob fly. Leave on your own two feet or on the barge to Grethor. Your choice. All right. Come at me if you think you're hard enough. More traitors in league with Tarsen. They must be preparing to strike. Quite possibly. Ah! Ujun, Ashen One. The formerly Ashen One. Another one down. My secret benefactor will be pleased. And it certainly pleases me because that means I'll get some more special equipment. More folks in the practice bout. Have you seen Maven? Looking for Maven? He is in another room, further down the hallway. Much obliged. Maven has fallen to the oh. century. Nice. He's already got him. And look, it's Tarsen. Oh, believe me, I was already on the melee weapon side of things here. Tor, I need reinforcements. Oh, what you need is more of a ouch. Okay, I'm stuck. Stupid, uh stasis beams but unfortunately he did not use wisely now fun fact back in the day for the original version of this episode you could actually kill everybody before Maven got killed but of course the cutscene then immediately had him killed Klingon death screen. Is 
that would even be a work. What is the meaning of this? Okay, <laughs> sorry, we're priorities. I gotta get the loot stuff first, then we can chat. What is the meaning of this, Alexander? Maven was sent here to replace his equipment, and yet I find you here, surrounded by Romulans, with the grandson of Martok dead at your feet. Explain yourself. Hey, this wasn't Kemtar's doing. We were trying to tell you about this, but no, you said you didn't want to know. Lady Sorella feared that you alone would not be able to keep her grandson safe. We followed these Romulans here and would have stopped them had these halls not been filled with Klingon traitors. And where were you when these assassins struck? Okay, okay, okay. Stop, stop. We're not going, we're not doing this. We have priorities. I see you have been listening to my son's conspiracy theories again. He talks of peace and uniting the houses. Yet, here he is, with a blade in his hand, looking for glory. I told you I wanted nothing to do with this. And yet, here you are. We've got proof now. While you were here at the Turners, assassins moved against Lady Sorella at her own estate. If we hadn't tracked down this agent and disarmed his explosive, she would be dead as well. At every step, we have encountered Klingons hiding in the shadows with blades at our backs. I can certainly vouch for that, having been attacked by Klingon vessels and attacked by Klingon warriors. I have not seen this evidence, but I believe what you say. We will get to the bottom of this. That does not mean we can act rashly. If there were Klingons aiding these agents, then we are still in danger. We need to find out who the rival house is. Then we can push them out into the open and deal with them the hard way. Agreed. A great house conspiring with the Tal Shi'ar to assassinate other Klingons. And it is not just a theory. How high does the corruption go? How high indeed. Sorella and the rest of the House of Martok will mourn for her grandson. But I must also see that security remains a priority. To start, I am sending you a recruit from our house, the warrior Valera. She's been personally trained by me and will aid your crew as we fight against the House of Torg. Now, you may have noticed that less than two panels ago, we were talking about trying to figure out the identity of the house involved. And now we have them flat out pointing about a fight against the House of Torg. This is another example of the people putting this stuff together, not reading their own scripts. Uh, rant, 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 rant. Okay, let's pick up the rewards. How congratulations to my former chains were from that house. At least before we sent them to Grethel on the frozen tundra of Rura Pinto. You have fought with me this far, my friend. Will you see this through to the end? Help me serve House <laughs> Torg, a dish colder than the gulag they used to command. I love what they have over here. Here we go again. <laughs> it will be an honor. Okay, let's see. First things first. We're not going to do anything fancy with uniforms yet. I'll save that for, you know, when I'm relatively sure I'm having Klingons I'm going to be sticking with. In the meantime, let's purchase those skills. I did say I was going to go hardcore on tactical, so we're going to continue. We're going to go the third level of energy weapon pets. I'm not going to have any hangar pets, so it's going to be threat generation. And I don't no ground points yet, so... That seems to be where we're going to be. Uh, other rewards we got? Well, we got the disruptor stuff, didn't we? I can put one of them on my ship. And I'm going to grab the one that's green quality. Unfortunately, I can't do anything about the other one because all my consoles are now filled. I might have one open up when I uh, get to level 10. But unfortunately, I'm a little bit short of that. 
It happens. Uh, rest of the stuff, most of which I don't need, I will grab the uh, medical hypo spray. The science kit I can't do anything with, so we'll sell that off at some point. And Stu. Well, Valera has the uh, cheapest of everything here, so we might as well give her the food. And we'll move the traitor signal over there. We have now come to the 10 o'clock p.m. hour, and therefore we have hit the end of tonight's stream. We will pick up the quest to uncover the truth behind those Klingon traitors next Wednesday, starting at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern to approximately 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Plus, on Saturday afternoon, I will be streaming Star Citizen. We don't have the new patch out yet, so it'll still be the live environment, but they did fiddle with something that will be worth exploring, shall we say. I will be doing that stream Saturday afternoon, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern to 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And there's a possibility that next Tuesday at 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern, there may be a little something involving Vikings going on. You didn't hear from me here, though. Honest. In any event, thank you all very much for watching, whether you are watching this live or watching it on demand, either here or on YouTube. Thank you all very much for joining me. Always appreciate you folks stopping by. This is Corith Landwalker, signing off.